hello y'all and welcome back to my channel and welcome to a review that I am disgustingly disgustingly late to I mean this is by the time I'm gonna review this uh film this edit it upload it it's gonna be like months since this shiz came out y'all ain't gonna even care no more but we got the fat palette i figured we might as well review it i have done a first impressions and if you all have seen that video then then you probably sort of already know where this video is headed and let's just say it isn't Shangri-La but today we are going to be reviewing the colored rain juicy boost palette which this came out and everybody lost their absolute ever-loving shiz because I feel like Colored Rain doesn't release a lot of palettes, like they're not putting shiz out every other week, like, like, uh, Colourpop, Too Faced, and a bunch of the other sort of normal generic brands that we see releasing shiz all the ding dang time. So when you have a brand that's got really good quality like Colored Rain and you've got them releasing another palette, word gets around pretty quick and people get pretty ding dang hyped up about it. It. Especially when you're considering that this shiz has a color story like this. And this coming after riding the coattails of that Vivid Pigments palette, a lot of people have grown to love and adore the Colored Rain Bright Eyeshadow Formula. So we had a lot of expectations for this shiz. As I said, color story is absolutely beautiful. You've got like your yellowy, orangey, whatever. So we've got some reds here, some pinks here. We got green all up and over here. The matte to shimmer ratio is absolute perfection, whereas you've only got three, count them, one, two, three, shimmers. Clearly that is something I can get down with. And not only that, you've got this colorful color story that even is sort of, how shall we say, curated row by row. Clearly you can mix and match and do all the whatevers that you want to do. But I do appreciate the whole like, oh, just go green. Oh, just go pink. Oh, just go orange. And then you've got the correlating center whatever shimmer lid shade. So yeah, when this thing came out, I was pretty stinking excited. And I was really excited to film my first impressions. And as y'all know how that ended, I ended up looking like the epitome of the nailed it meme in the makeup verse. And let me tell you, I am not the picture that people were trying to do. I am the after result of someone attempting to do it. I'm the awful tragic version that just doesn't quite live up to that Pinterest original look. I was literally a three-year-old playing around in my mom's makeup and I looked the part. But with that all said, I am going to obviously swatch this for you, show you all the whatevers, and then at the end, we will discuss this in much more depth. So I'm just going to start with the row that is much more up my shebang bang alley. We have got the Shimmer Blue Berry Burst, which looks like it's going to be all kinds of fantastical. We've got Coconut Water, which is a white. Y'all know how I feel about that. I don't think I am artistic enough to understand or comprehend the blending reasoning behind having a matte white in a palette. Then cucumber avocado, which is, y'all know the green is my shiz. We got this one here. It's a little bit chunky. Looks all kinds of pretty and heckin' pigmented. I mean, this is a white. I don't know if I have a favorite white matte eyeshadow. It's just not my thing. And then that there. You know, we're not pulling out of the gate with a bad start. Then we have got mint leaves, which is a color that is, you're like, yes, yes, Soraya, that is my shiz. Energy Boost, which is also really, really pretty and unique. And then Kale Yeah, which is an absolutely like grungy, deep, dark green, a la something I think Melt Cosmetics would um, come up with. So we've got them right here. 
looking like there and you're like yeah yeah look at that pigmentation then into the second row this is the row that i used in my uh trying first impressions we have got sweet ruby which not gonna lie i hate this it is one of those weirdly formatted super chunky like they're chunky in the pan it's chunky when you pick it up it's chunky when you try to blend it out it's got like a hint of shimmery whatever shiftiness which i guess that may equate to the chunkiness but that doesn't mean i have to like it pink grapefruit which is a really pretty pink here it does go on the eyes a lot darker then cranberry vanilla right here and then berry beet which feels very very rough to the touch so here we have there just looking like a little something something that there and then this one right here which you expect would be all kinds of delicious glorious decadence last but not least on this row we have a watermelon detox right here i will say these mats a lot of these mats are super super hard pressed like Obviously, an eyeshadow is pressed, but I feel like with these, they're not creamy. They're not like, you feel like you've got to push around a lot to get a good amount of payoff. In swatching, as well as actually picking that shiz up with a brush, this shade here is Apple Strawberry. So here we have that. Like that swatch there was after like going really hard on into the pan. You can see how much is right there. Then this one, which was, oh my goodness. You are going to start to see my issues here with this row. There is just sort of lacking a certain amount of, I want to say, creaminess, you know? An eyeshadow can be powdery. That's okay, whatever. We're dealing with a literal powder product but you know i have powdery eyeshadows that have a much higher level of adherence like if you look at the greens here compared to these shades here you can see how much patchier and how much more inconsistent the swatches just compared to these four right here then my favorite shimmer which is lemon wheatgrass which is a really nice like yellowy goldy green base shimmer we'll put that up top where it deserves to be i think out of all the shimmers in here this is the absolute best one easy to work with isn't chunky doesn't have a lot of fallout just sort of speaks for itself the way i like a shimmer to do then we have citrus zinger which is a very pale once again you're gonna have to kind of kind of really get your finger all up in there to get a certain amount of pigment up out of the pan then ginger bay which is a beautiful i do absolutely love that kind of like almost mustardy y'all know that's 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 my jam then turmeric shot right here which is another very pretty shade it is probably one of the most creamy feeling in the palette we have right there that's just pith then here and here and then last but not least we have got orange carrot which you know what carrots aren't orange i'm sure someone's gonna school me down below well there are carrots of all sorts of colors you know nothing and then sweet potato mango right here which is another beautiful that is a kind of neutral that i can get behind let's put those right here. Okay, so here we have the swatch parade going on here. There is a lot of powder up on these things. My favorite shimmer is this one right here. I do enjoy these two shades right here. This one is a I mean, the darker, the deeper, the whatever, the color, the more difficult it is to formulate, the more difficult it is to work with. However, that being said, I have used Viseart mattes that are of this dark, deep, decadent kind of color, and I've blended them out with absolutely no problem. This one is a little bit kind of faint. Um, Y'all would have seen how this 
uh, color story right here went down in that trying on video. I do like these two shades here as well as this one here. But the problem is a lot of these lack, how shall we say, uh, consistent saturation. But this is the color story, looking all kinds of nice, looking all kinds of complimentary to that uh, Vivid Pigments palette. I was ready to get my absolute complete artist on with this shiz. But I hate to say it, we didn't get that far. In fact, we sort of kind of did the try on and then took the palette and put it in a corner for it to think about what it had done or in a more accurate sense, think about what it wasn't doing. But before filming this review, I did go through and try the other rows as well so that I could give you a more in-depth overall review of each of the shades, not just the experience I had with the one particular row. Let me just preface this with saying it's, it's not that I don't like this palette, it's that I'm not happy with it. When you take into consideration the experience I have had with the Colored Rain Vivid Pigments palette, which I believe I've reviewed, yes I have, which I will if I remember, which 99.99999 times out of 10, I don't, but if I do, I will leave that review down below, as well as the try on with this. That experience was almost something akin to sort of a spiritual awakening, whereas using this was more of an indoctrination to a seedy cult-like thing. There just weren't enough parallels between the two to make me feel completely satisfied with this when you compare it to that Colored Rain Vivid Pigments palette, which is a beautiful, near-perfect matte bright shade formula. I don't want to hear anyone telling me, well, these are pigments! So were those, hence the name, Vivid Pigments. I am aware of how to use pigments. I'm aware of how to use Colored Rain pigments. So here comes sort of the frustration in with the palette. Some colors, absolutely beautiful, absolutely stunning, gorgeous, pigmented, blendable, creamy, opaque, smooth, I mean all the wonderful adjectives that we use to describe eyeshadows could be used to describe some of the single shades up in this shiz. However, and unfortunately, that isn't the same for each and every single pan. Each of these shades are not necessarily created equally. You would have seen in me trying this shiz that we started off with this and we're like, okay, all right, it's nice, it's rosy, it's pinky. And then I was like, all right, let's dip into one of these. And we had sort of a level of depth and definition, but not really to the extreme of what I was seeing in the pan, because that was definitely not the experience that I was getting on my eyes. And then I was like, okay, all right, screw it. Let's go all the way to the bottom here. And once again, I just wasn't achieving that level of beautiful gradient effect. And let me tell you, that is not in for me not packing so much shade on my brush. I was digging and rolling around in there and I'm like, all right, I have got the world's largest amount of pigment on these bristles. And I would go to put it on my eye and it would just <laughs> And you would think I was touching my eye with a bare brush. There was nothing. Sort of in the same vein, this shade is very, very faint. This one is, no, this one is eh, okay. Suffers from sort of the same powdery lack of pigmentation, not wanting to adhere as these. This one was very nice. That one was very nice. I really enjoyed these three here. I have used and experienced better deep green. These two shimmers I absolutely hated. This one is complete chunk city unless you have the world's smoothest eyelids. We're talking like not a single ounce of texture. Then yeah, sure, this shade may be your holy grail, but if you're a normal human like, you know, you or I, then this may not be for you. This one, although a little bit better, was just 
it went everywhere. It had a lot of fallout. Now, I understand there is a certain amount of, oh, well, use a concealer, use a tacky primer, use a glitter glue. I like a shimmer shadow to do what it's supposed to do without me begging it and using 10 other products in order for me to get it to do that. Lemon wheatgrass here, nice beautiful, smooth, lovely shimmer, does what it's told, doesn't try to fight back. So all in all, my main problem with this palette, love the color story, love the matte to shimmer ratio, but what I don't love is the sheer fact that so many of these shades are so just, just, awfully dry and we're not talking just like oh well it's a powder so it's dry no i'm talking about they're so hard pressed that you're literally swirling all up in there to get the pigment and even if you've got the craziest amount of pickup in the pan and and you dip your brush in that shiz and you go to do whatever and it's just gone. There is no level of layering. There is no creamy blendability. They just sort of dissipate into nothing. It's like they're so dry, they like attach onto the bristles of your brushes, but they don't want to actually adhere to anything else. There is no like, there's nothing within the formula that makes it want to adhere to where you want to put it. I'm not sure how else to explain it, but no matter how much I finagled with it, no matter how much I packed and packed and packed, you know, if I had any kind of color all up on that, you know, and I would like, all right, Pack the color on there, time to do the, the tiniest, the titchiest of blending motions. Jesus take the wheel, that shiz was just gone. I wasn't able to get the amount of depth that I wanted. Like I said, they were just really, really dry, didn't apply really well. Unless you're doing, you're using like a really, really tacky something, something with the mats, and you are merely just pressing them on, I wasn't really having a good time messing around with them and the frustrating thing is yeah that's the majority of the palette but you have some shades like these ones all up in here this one and this one and that one or these two here these were just uh, that is, uh. just all in all i expected so much more from a colored rain palette and i don't want to hear the excuse of Oh, well, it's a pressed pigment or whatever. I know. We know. I'm not stupid. And I get really, really frustrated. Y'all would have seen in that try-on, I was getting mad. I was, like, so ready to just, like, throw down, sell my whole makeup collection and be like, I'm never touching it again because I suck at makeup. Because I can't tell you how many times I've heard, well, the reason that this palette doesn't work for you or the reason it's not working is because you aren't starting out with the darkest shade. I understand that is a very, very viable way of doing your makeup, but I also understand that with all my other palettes, or at least the majority of them, they work the way doing the light to the dark. And so this was just, it makes me so sad because Lacey from Spooky Lips and Fat Hips likes it. Teresa from Teresa is Dead enjoys it. And I'm like, was it just me? I'm pretty sure that Britt Clark and uh, Nomnivorous, they weren't really like as completely sussed with it. But I was just expecting to all do all kinds of wonderful things and end up looking like a, a freaking tropical paradise up in here. But it just really, really fell short. I mean, just the powdery unadherence. Like it was like I was using chalk it was just 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 not fun not the level of quality that i am used to from the color rain pigments i have tried mm, burp squad that i have tried before so that just all kind of came together for this being just an overall disappointing experience if i could return it i honestly would if you want to get you a colored rain palette i would say go for the vivid pigments palette this one Watch other reviews. Obviously, I'm not here to tell you what to do, but for me and my experience, how I like to do my makeup, what my expectations were, this is not something that I would recommend, say, 
go out, spend the money, buy it, I would say pass. All right, there we have that disappointing review. I didn't want to do like a whole palette roast because it wasn't entirely all just like a horrible mistake. It was just so underwhelming. When you have like this brand that you know can do this bomb diggity shiznit stuff and then they release this and you get it and you use the same techniques that you were using with their other palettes and that doesn't work and you start freaking out or at least I do. Um, all y'all may do your makeup in a much less um, chaotic way. But for me if I'm trying to turn myself into some kind of something something and the tools of my trade ain't working I start to lose my ever-loving shiz. Obviously, I would love to hear what y'all have to say about this, because like I said, some creators that I absolutely love and respect and whatever with their opinions, they're like, yes, good. Whereas I'm over here like, um... Are you sure? Are, are you sure? Did I get a bad one? I don't really like using that experience, but that, that uh, excuse, but did I get a bad one? Let me know what you feel about the palette down below. I will leave, if I remember, like I always say, some of the other reviews down below so you can get a good um, wide breadth of information. But thank you guys so much for watching. I love you, and as always, keep it real. Mwah!